Okay, notice right here in the top corner of the heart of God. What is that? Global kingdom advance. And notice how it starts off. Starts off what? One is what? Ah, don't worry about that. One is small. And one wins another, or one plants another, and then they plant another, and then they plant another, and then they plant another. And before you know it, you have multiple church plants, multiple churches. Is that God's vision for his kingdom? It is, isn't it? Amen. It is. So we're going to bypass a little iPad since it ain't working right, or I can't work it right. Look at uh, Matthew chapter 13 and verse 31, 32, and 33. Again, this is the Lord teaching in parables as he started doing here uh, in the gospel of Matthew chapter 13. And this is, this is how the Lord continues to teach throughout his uh, ministry. He teaches in parables from this point on. And this is part of his vision, and it's part of the vision that we need to understand because the first field, which is the first strategy we're going to go into, works off of this principle, the principle of small to large. Uh, read with me uh, chapter 13, verse 31. You there? Say amen. Verse 31 says, He presented another parable to them saying he would be Jesus Christ. This is Jesus' teaching. Jesus says in verse 31, the kingdom of heaven is like. That's interesting, isn't it? So we know instantly that our Lord is telling us what his kingdom is going to be like. Amen or not? Can't miss that, can you? So the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. Now, what did we learn last Wednesday about being sowers? Where do we sow? Everywhere. Who creates the good soil? God. We don't worry about the soil. We just sow. Chris told me after Chris told me Thursday, he said, you know, Tracy, you can't say the word soil. I said, well, I can if I slow down, but I get carried away. So God creates the good soil. There you go, soil. I'm, I'm trying, folks. Bear with me. Uh, dirt. How about that? Dirt. God creates the good dirt. And uh, we don't worry about that. We just sow. We just sow the seeds and sow the seeds. And the kingdom of heaven, we're being told here uh, in this parable, is like a, a mustard seed which a man took and sowed in his field, verse 32. And this is, and this is, a, is smaller than any other seeds, but when it is full grown, it, it is larger than the garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air and the net can come and nest in its branches. You getting the principle? This very small Seed. Now, those who are critics of Scripture will say, well, you know, a mustard seed isn't the smallest seed. And it's not. You ever seen a Bermuda grass seed? It's, it's smaller than that. But when it comes to garden seeds, and notice that it says garden seeds, and we don't really have to worry about that because we're not critics of the Bible, but just to prove the point, when it comes to garden seeds, the mustard seed would be the smallest. Critics would also say, look, mustard Mustard plants, when they're left alone, they can get big, but they can't get big enough for a bird to come and build a nest in. Well, Palestinian mustard seeds literally do get that big. They grow to the size of trees if they're, they're left alone, and birds can come and nest, mess, nest in them. But the point is this. The kingdom of heaven starts off minute, very, very small, but yet it grows to global size. And, that, and that's what, what's happened. So I want you to think about that how, that, how that works. One person becomes a convert. One person gets saved. And that one person can literally break generational curses. 
That one person can literally be the very first one in their family to become a Christian. And literally from that one person being saved, multiple generations of their families can become followers of Christ. Or there can be one small church develop. And from that church can grow many, many churches. Isn't that the way it happens? How many churches have we planted? Five. Now, what if or we've planted five and we're not through? God's going to use us to plant more. I believe that. What if those five churches that we planted all plant a church? By the way, that would be grand churches to us, wouldn't it? If they planted, you get it? Grand churches like grandkids? Okay, anyway, y'all are not in a laughing mood. But if those five churches planted a church, you see how the it's multiplying. And everything is reproducible. Listen, that's, just, that's not just how it should work. That's not just how it ought to work. That's God's vision for his kingdom. Take me, for instance. I wasn't the first Christian in our family. But I will tell you this. Now, when I say family, I'm talking immediate family, mom and dad, brothers and sisters, yada, yada, yada. When I got saved... None of my immediate family was going to church. We had gone to church. We were raised in church. But at that particular time, my mom and dad, my brothers and sisters, none of them was going to church. Lois's family, none of them was attending church. They, like my family, had at one point been in church, but they weren't. And when Lois and I got saved before long, all of our immediate family, for the most part, was serving in a local church. Isn't that interesting? That's God's vision for his kingdom. This little cowboy church, three trees, plants a church and then plants another church and then another. And before you know it, the kingdom of heaven is expanded. Let me ask you this. Could we have done as much for the kingdom of heaven had we not planted rusty nails? Had we not planted Drover, had we not planted Damascus Road, had we not invested in the seasonal migrant workers church, would we do as much out of this one location as those five churches would do? The answer is, of course not, right? Now, would we be probably bigger here as far as attendance if we had not planted those churches and since people to those churches? Probably. We probably had a few more people going here. But would we have grown the kingdom? There's no way. It's just not possible. Think of the people that Rusty Nails has reached down in St. Francis County. Think of the people that they've baptized from that area. Think of the people that Brother Chance and him has reached at Drover Cowboy Church. Where It doesn't matter. Uh, at Drover Cowboy Church. In Harrisburg. Think of the people they've baptized. Think of the people that Jeff, uh, think of the people that Jeff and them has baptized at Damascus Road Cowboy Church in Damascus, Arkansas. That could not have happened from here. You get the point? Are you getting, catching what the Lord is saying about the mustard seed? This was the mustard seed, and it's grown by multiplying. Have you ever thought that God's purpose for the family was to add to his kingdom? What other purpose would they be for for the family? Listen to me, mom and dad, especially you young folks. Your objective is to raise godly children that will serve the Lord Jesus Christ, that will add to his kingdom. That's your objective. That's the purpose for having children is growing them into the kingdom. So as we read this parable, the parable of the mustard seed, the smallest of seeds, the minutest, can grow into the largest by multiplying and going out. And that is God's vision for his kingdom. Another parable that he gives, which is along the same line, is in verses, or in one verse, verse 33. Look at verse 33. He spoke another parable to them. 
The kingdom of heaven is like le- leaven. You know what leaven is? It's yeast. That's all it is. Everybody knows what yeast is, right? The peril of the kingdom of heaven is like leaven or like yeast, which a woman took and hid into three pecks of flour until it was all leavened. What, what does yeast do to dough? How does it make it rise? Do you just drop a drop on top and the whole loaf rise? What do you do to the yeast? You mix it in. It permeates. And then it affects the whole loaf of dough. That's what the kingdom of heaven is like. A little bit, not much, just a little bit, but it mixes into the whole loaf and affects the whole loaf. This little church called Cowboy Church. Well, I'm not from here. Anybody, if you were born and raised in or around Cross County, raise your hand. A lot of you guys were. Uh, Would you say that Three Trees has had some effect on Cross County? Yeah, it has had it. Sure it has. Just like Wynn Baptist has, uh, just like all the other churches here. We have had an effect on this county. If there was no churches, if, if there was no representation of God's people in Cross County, would Cross County be different? Sure it would. It would be vastly different. You think it'd be a lot more heathens? Yeah, sure it would, because of the ministries of the people of God, we've affected the county because they've come into the kingdom of God. That's God's vision for his kingdom. Now, you can take this back as far as you want to. Let's just take it back as far as the marriage setting. Why does God intend for kingdom people to marry kingdom people? To grow the kingdom. It's exactly right. Christians should only ever even consider marrying someone who is a Christian. For the purpose of growing God's kingdom. Oh, wait a minute. How many people think about the kingdom of God when they get married? That's the church's job, isn't it? To instruct their young. That's why it's so important. Listen to me, parents. It's one of the reasons it's so important. You make sure you bring your children to church. But even more so, that's why it's so important to teach your children at home The fundamentals of God's word. Dads, listen to me. That's why when that young man knocks on your door and wants to take your precious darling daughter to the movies, he better be attending church somewhere. This is yes. Well, how do you find that out? You know, I have dads ask me, well, how am I supposed to find out if he's a Christian? Are you kidding me? Are you serious? It's your daughter. And you're not willing to say, son, tell me about your relationship with Jesus. And if he says, uh, say, been nice meeting you. Hit the road, Jack, and don't come back. No mo, no mo, no mo. Amen or not? Or hit the road, Jack, and meet me at church Sunday. You can sit with us, but you can't date my daughter. Are y'all all right? I mean, this isn't surprising to you, is it? This is the way you raise your kids, man. For why? For the sake of the kingdom. Because your babies are to be influencers for the kingdom of God. Guard your family, man. That's how far back it goes. This church should be all about multiplying You know, when I said God ain't through with us planting churches, I don't believe he is not one bit. How come? You got an inside scoop, preacher? No, I just know what God's vision is. God's vision is for churches to multiply. What's the normal routine with churches? Let's get big. Let's get big. Let's just get bigger and bigger and bigger. Well, that's cool. But how much can you do from one spot? You can do a lot. But the truth of the matter is what? You are limited. What did Jesus say right here? Greater things you will do 
than I have done. Why? Because first of all, there's going to be more of you. You're going to be going more places than I went. You're going to be multiplying. You're going to be making disciples. I'm going back to the Father. I was only one. You are many. See the principle? So here, the principle of the mustard seed is that we start small. Now let's talk about me and you. Because this is important where we're going to start next Wednesday. Because we're going to get into the strategy part. We're going to get into how God intends to fulfill his vision for his kingdom. How many of you, when it comes to your Christian faith, your biblical knowledge, and your talents and gifts, how many of you kind of feel like a mustard seed? Raise your hand. All you mustard seeds, keep your hands up. Okay, that's cool. Nothing wrong with that. Well, what God say about the mustard seed? He's going to use little old you to do extraordinary things. Right? Question? Go ahead, Miss Linda. Yeah, and it's not a job. It's calling, isn't it? Sure it is. Let's just use this church, for instance. I can tell you, because I know, that there are 99.9% .9 more people coming to this church because of you guys than it is because of me. 99.9%, .9 that's almost all, isn't it? Sure it is. Now, when we first started this church, man, I knocked on doors, I visited, I got run off. I did a lot of things. But that ain't what grew this church. The mustard seeds is what grew this church. Now, watch this. This church would have never, ever planted five other churches without the mustard seeds in this church growing and doing. How many of y'all have done things this church that you never done at other churches? Golly, look at the hands. Why is that? Well, because you're growing too, right? Every seed needs some conditions, right, Miss Linda? Needs soil, needs what? I know what you're saying, and I. <laughs> well, that's where I'm at. I mean, that's that's where we are. Uh, if I was on a perch, it'd be a stool pigeon. You know, pigeons are full of uh, pigeon meat. Uh, do what, Rick? For the love of Christ. You do. Yeah. Let's use your example, Rick, up here doing boards. Now, why are we going to Drover? Because that's God's church. Well, ain't we got something to do around here? Not as important as that right now. Sure. I mean, there's things we could find to do around here. You know how big a deal it's going to be for them if they can get into that new building by Easter? You know how many blessings are going to flow from that? For Brother Chance to be able to stand on the stage of what God has done and preach the gospel. So if we can contribute a little bit to that, boy, don't we, don't, don't we want to do that? Absolutely. Yeah, that church is just as important to us as our church is. And when Baptist and other churches, because the vision is kingdom, not what's on the marquee of the billboard in front of the church. By the way, y'all notice we ain't got a billboard. We do have a sign on the fence, though, don't we? We do. We're going places, man. We're like the Jeffersons. We're moving up. Uh, Rick, amen. To do what, Rick? Serve. Serves the word. Serves the word. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, he cut you off. Yeah. 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 You, look, the, the, the analogy is a mustard seed, but analogies mean something, and seeds have to have conditions to what? Germinate, right? So you're where you're supposed to be. God's made you the way you're supposed to be. The conditions are right for you to germinate and grow and flourish. Flourish. 
Not stay small, right? Big. That's the parable. Listen, this is God's vision for you, for me, for us, this church, is to not stay small. You know, there's value in that plant when it's small, isn't it? You, you, you get nourishment from it. You can pick it, the mustard seed. But when it gets big, it's seen by all. It's used by all. It blesses all. So don't overlook the parable of the mustard seed. Jesus said exactly what he wanted to say with that parable. Little bitty things is what God intends to use in his kingdom. And he's going to make those things big, and they're going to turn into even bigger things, right? Look, uh, maybe this is going down a rabbit trail, but I'm just going to tell you. When we, the, the arena ministry, it's, it's becoming multifaceted. I shared this with John when we was going up to Drover. Check this out. We've had an arena ministry basically ever since we started this church. And the purpose was to what? To preach the gospel to those who come to the events. And we've done that. And we've seen people saved through that. And that's our, that's our motive for the arena ministry. But now the arena ministry is tithing into the mission fund, right? And that mission fund is sending dollars and support to different ministries uh, all over all over the world, actually. If you'll read those bulletin boards back there, you'll see that. But the arena ministry has even geared up another notch, hadn't it? The arena ministry just purchased $1,000 worth of Bibles for the jail ministry. Give God a hand. Huh? How about that? It's crazy, isn't it? Little mustard seed. Little mustard seed. Now Deanna and Wayne can take... The Word of God. And by the way, these aren't Walmart Bibles. Nothing wrong with a Walmart Bible. These are study Bibles. Am I correct? MacArthur study Bibles. It's what I study with. It's what Chris studies with. Mustard seed, see? Is that the end of the arena ministry? Gail, is there more money in the arena account than ever? It is. That's mustard seed effect. That's God's intention for his, that's his vision for his kingdom. Now look, a lot of y'all raised your hands as mustard seeds. By the way, we all should raise our hands as mustard seeds. We're all mustard seeds. But his vision is to take those mustard seeds, germinate them, grow them, and influence the whole wide world with mustard seeds. Isn't that good? Wayne, would you have ever thought, how long have you been up here with us now? Almost three years. It's, everybody knows this guy. Everybody knows him for good reasons, for kingdom reasons, because God took a mustard seed from Florida, transplanted it in Arkansas soil, good soil, and now the kingdom is growing because of it. Amen, Jody? Hey, and here's the thing, guys. You know, when I call you up to draw, and I know a lot of you guys are shy, and this ain't your deal. This is really weird for Cowboy Church, ain't it? Let's just be honest. This ain't what we do. But we'll do anything for the kingdom, won't we? Yeah. Check this out. March the 7th, me and Matt, Brother Matt Dunneman, the one that taught me this, are going to Little Rock at the Arkansas Baptist State Convention so that he can train some leading pastors from the Cowboy Churches of Arkansas, the heart of God, so that this fall we will have a leadership conference in Heber Springs at Mountaintop Cowboy Church so that we can teach all of the Cowboy Churches of Arkansas the heart of God. Why? Because all mustard seeds need to be growing, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. We, we're influencers. We're like the leaven. We need to influence the whole loaf. We want our community to be the best community that it could ever be. We want our community to reflect the kingdom of God. And we're the ones to do it. We're the ones to do it. God's vision is for us to do it. Yes, ma'am. That's the way God's people interact. Got to be. 
we got a few minutes left, and I'm going to ask in these last few minutes if there might be a testimony of someone who was a mustard seed in their family, in their household. Maybe you was the first one to get saved in a long line of unbelievers. You, buddy, you were a mustard seed. Were you the first in your family to be saved? First one to go to church, and now you're serving faithfully. You're here every time the doors is open. Has it influenced anyone else in your family? Well, let me just tell you this. I know you are influencing those in your family. Absolutely. Anybody else? Mustard seed. Deanna, what you tell us? First one in your family, mom, dad. Well, your dad got saved in prison, you said. Yeah. None of your brothers, none of your siblings. You're the first one. What has happened since you got saved? Well, it's just because we ain't got time, but since you started working here or, or for three, on behalf of three trees at the jail ministry, any women gotten saved? Yeah. See there? Mustard seed. Isn't that great, Wayne? Yeah. Only one. Isn't that amazing? And we know how God's used you in just three years. Three years. Anybody else? Go ahead. By the way, there's more to that story, too, if you don't mind me saying. Uh, many of you may not know this, but Brother Chris is traveling to Tyronza, to First Baptist Tyronza, on Sunday evenings to do a Bible study with that church because they don't have a service. Matter of fact, they don't have a whole lot of anything, really. They don't have a pastor. And here's the cool part. That's the church that Chris grew up in. He was married in that church. He knows all of the older people that are in that church. He's probably made all of them mad at one point when he was a kid. You know how kids are. But now God's using the mustard seed to go back. And not only is he having a Bible study with the, the, the people in First Baptist Tyronza, but with those from the community, as he just said, his mother-in-law and father-in-law is coming to that. They're unchurched. Mustard seed. It's life-changing, amen. Boy, that's awesome. Mustard seed, guys. We're all mustard seeds. But God's vision for the mustard seeds is global kingdom advancement. We're to advance. Hey, God could have used anybody he wanted to, right? But he chose to use mustard seeds to advance his kingdom globally. Look, guys, the first thing you ought to do every time you come to this church is go down those mission bulletin boards and read what this mustard seed is doing globally, the way we're supporting pastors and ministries globally. And it all started as a mustard seed. That's God's vision. Now, next Wednesday, we're going to get into the strategy, the four fields of God's heart. And uh, it's good. It's challenging. And it's practical, it's reproducible. And what I mean by reproducible, this study is not meant for you to sit and listen to me teach and never implement it. When we get into the strategy, the strategy is for you to implement these four fields in your own personal walk with Christ. Some of it's going to be challenging not that it's hard to do, but it's things, as Chris said, about this 70-year-old saint who never shared the gospel. Some of it is going to give us a very simplistic, undeniable, it's going to take away all of our excuses as to why we're not growing as mustard seeds building the kingdom of God. It's going to get, listen, gooder and gooder and gooder as we go. Amen or not? How many mustard seeds say amen? You betcha. Amen. Yes, sir. It's good, isn't it, Wayne? It's good. Thank you for 
willing to be challenged. Amen. Amen. Well, hello, everybody. My name is Tracy Wilson. Thank you so much for being with us uh, via Facebook or YouTube or however you're watching us, whether it be a Wednesday night round pen or a Sunday morning uh, service here at the Cowboy Church. Just wanted to say hello and give you a personal invite to come and be with us here at the Cowboy Church. Uh, there's three options for you. Sunday mornings, we have a 9 a.m. service, uh, and then a second service at 10.30 a.m. And then on Wednesday nights, uh, we do what we call a round pin Bible study, which is just getting into the heart of God's Word and studying it for all it's worth. We would love to meet with you uh, here in person at the Cowboy Church. We're so thankful for uh, technology. We've gotten uh, comments on our uh, sermons and Bible studies uh, all the way from Africa. And so we're so thankful. But uh, we do want to invite you here with us uh, to be uh, in person, in-house at the Cowboy Church. You know, the Bible says this about salvation. The Bible says clearly in Ephesians 2.8 that salvation is by grace through faith, not of works, so no man can boast. Our prayer is that through these messages and through these Bible studies uh, that the Word of God would uh, find its place in your heart. The promise is that God's Word will not return void. So we want to make ourselves available to you uh, for anything that we can do to help you. If you have questions about this Jesus that we preach about, this Jesus that we serve, this Jesus that we know as our Savior and that the Bible declares as the only Savior. He is the way, the truth, and the life. If you would have a question about that, if we could help you with that, or if God deals with your heart through one of our sermons or Bible studies, and you've responded to that, and you've put your hope and trust, and you've committed to follow Jesus Christ, we would love to celebrate with you about that. We'd love to talk with you about that help you in any way that we can. If you're watching, then obviously you have Facebook or uh, the availability of YouTube. Uh, if we can do anything, I would love for you to personally message me on Facebook. And I would love to correspond with you about this. God is able, and He is able to meet all of our needs. He has extended His grace to us uh, through the offer of forgiveness of our sins and eternal life. I hope that you have taken advantage of that. I hope that you belong to Christ. And please take advantage of Three Trees Cowboy Church. Being here in person or just allowing us to message with you and help you in any way we can. Until then, until we see you in person or we see that message, God bless you and thank you for being with us.